On my channel, I talked a lot about various accidents related to nuclear energy. These accidents took place at nuclear power plants and submarines at production facilities. In this video I will tell you how a nuclear reactor starts up, and why it emits a blue glow. Many people have an approximate idea of how nuclear reactors work in power plants, but the very preparation for startup and the moment of that startup is a very interesting topic. Because the very moment when the reactor comes out of subcritical state to the minimum controllable power level MCUM, is not only a very responsible process, but also very spectacular. Here it should be recalled that the reactor has fuel elements, fuel rods, which consist of zirconium tubes with uranium fuel pellets inside. As long as these fuel elements are just lying there, you can even walk around them, because in this state, a chain reaction is impossible. Another thing is if these fuel pellets are collected in sufficient quantity in one place. These pellets contain 2% uranium dioxide 235 and 98% uranium 238, 236, 239. This zirconium tube is about 3.5 m long and about 1.35 cm in diameter. These fuel rods are assembled into an assembly and the assemblies are placed in the reactor. The reactor is filled with such assemblies using a manipulator and a tracking chamber. As you can see, this reactor is almost filled. The manipulator with the fuel assembly, the one on the left, is loaded into the shaft, and a tube with a visual inspection camera is submerged next to it. The crane operators load the assemblies with fuel elements one by one. At the same time the empty spent fuel pool is used as a temporary storage room for these assemblies at a sufficient distance from each other. The manipulator picks up the assembly and takes it through the gap in the wall between the pool and the reactor silo. Installing the assemblies in the reactor itself is a very complex and demanding process. It uses the man-machine control method, where not only all kinds of sensors monitor the installation, but also the staff via a video camera. As you can see, in this reactor, most of the assemblies with fuel rods are already installed. Under no circumstances can this assembly be allowed to come apart when touched or hit by anything, and the zirconium rods with the uranium fuel themselves get into the reactor in the gaps. Here we should also explain separately that in addition to the uranium rods in these assemblies there are also neutron absorber rods. They prevent the chain reaction from starting because the number of neutrons and their total energy is not enough to start the nuclear fission chain reaction. The subreactor pool and the reactor shaft itself are filled with water. Once everything is ready to start up, the reactor shaft itself and the above reactor part of the pool are filled to the correct level with water. This water is the primary coolant and coolant and radiation protection. Then, the direct startup of the reactor itself begins with the lifting of the emergency protection rods to their highest position. This process takes place slowly and is constantly monitored by the reactor. The reactor now looks like this. After all the accident control rods are removed from the reactor, the automatic control rods begin to gradually lift off. All this increases the neutron flux density. After the automatic control rods are also removed, the compensating group begins to work. In essence, these are the reactor reactivity compensation rods. A bright flash appears at a certain stage of the reactor reactivity. Its spectral composition lies more in the blue-violet zone of visible light, as well as in the UV part of the spectrum. The spectacle is truly fantastic and incomparable. From this point on, the reactor is considered to be started up. The thing is that at the moment of the chain reaction of uranium fission a large number of elementary particles appear, which have a high enough speed. But since all these processes take place in water, the speed of light in water is about 40% lower than in a vacuum. So, some particles have so much energy that they travel in water a little faster than light travels in the same water. If we make an analogy, the same effect is at work here, 
which generates a shock wave of sound when a fighter jet goes into supersonic. Only here there is water instead of air, elementary particles instead of a fighter jet, and light instead of sound. This radiation was called the vavilov cherenkov radiation. And the scientists who discovered this effect and explained its nature were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1958. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.